try to grow from there. Cool beans, man. All right, well, let's go ahead and uh, get started. I know we got a lot of stuff uh, to talk about, and I'm sure it's going to take a decent amount of time, but I know there's a lot of good stuff in here. So I guess just uh, start off with who you are, uh, kind of what got you into real estate, and I kind of touched it on it already, but what, uh, what it is that you do. All right. Well, uh, for the ones who don't know me, uh, my name is Luis Aguirre. Um, I immigrated to the United States at 13 years old. Uh, attended school here in the States, um, married my uh, high school sweetheart 12 years ago. Uh, we have a four-year-old daughter. Um, kind of as uh, my professional background, uh, I've been in dairy for 25 years now. Um, in the last 14 in sales and service, and really the last six really based on uh, sales uh, mostly. So that's kind of how I weigh in my bread and butter every day. Um, you know, I'm not one of these, uh, you know, real estate guys that do real estate uh, as a full-time business. Uh, we are growing towards that direction, but we're not there yet. Um, so as of this moment, I still, you know, do my uh, my hours with uh, corporate America, and then we kind of do this on the side. And, uh, you know, why I got into real estate mostly was, um, again, you know, I was at that time in my life, you know, getting married, you know, planning for kids. So the future was really kind of on our plate. So we're like, well, what, what do we do for a future? You know, uh, you know, company offered 401k and, uh, you know, things like that. We're like, well, what do, you know, we're at that age, right? Where, what do we invest? And uh, so we kind of look at different ways and we saw that real estate was just a good, I guess, for lack of better terms, a vehicle that we can jump on and grow some wealth through real estate. Um, so, you know, again, real estate is just one of the things we do as uh, as an investment as we grow our future and plan for for that future. Um, and we have other investments. You know, we also invest in into companies. Um, you know, startup businesses have been kind of always a passion of mine. Uh, so we're looking at a you know, how we can partner up with people who are struggling and, you know, invest with them uh, because I was at a point where I wish someone would have invested into me where I could grow. And um, so, again, uh, again, why we're into real estate and real estate has become a big part is because, um, you know, again, it's just a fast vehicle that we can grow wealth really fast. So uh, why we chose the real estate was going to be our main road to that, you know, financial freedom. Um, and again, you know, I, through my trainings and, uh, you know, just listening to a lot of people in real estate, you know, every, everyone goes back to this, you know, you know, what is your why, why, you know, in quotes and drive on that. And if, of course, everyone's why is their, is their family is, you know, the ones that they're trying to support. But, you know, my why was, I was just tired of going nowhere. You know, I, I, I thought like a consumer, I spent every dollar I earned because I had not been taught any better. Uh, I didn't know how to use money. Um, so I, I really just had that, that moment in my life where I'm like, you know, I'm just tired of being broke. You know, just that pain of, I'm just tired of spinning my wheels and going nowhere. You know, I, I got to learn something new. And uh, so we really started digging into real estate and, um, why we've been, I myself for one, and you know, my wife as well, uh, you know, I, I have a big passion for this now because not only am I helping myself, I get to help other people and I get to help communities. Um, so it, it's just a much bigger picture. I get to be part of something bigger than just a nine to five, I get to come home and be miserable because I don't know how to use my money. And so, uh, so what, what type of investing do you do specifically then with real estate? So again, with real estate, our, so what our, our roadmap looks like is how do we fund money to buy and hold properties, right? Um, you know, you always hear people talking about oh, wholesaling, flipping, but those are really just extra strategies. You know, you, you obtain a project to do what with it, you know, uh, to opt- ultimately to buy and 
hold this project and to grow equity in it and one day to cash out this equity or to pay it off and make full income from rentals. That's how that's how true wealth is built is through long term holding. And uh, so once we learned that, we're like, well, I'm broke. How do I make money other than my nine to five? You know, and uh, you can't just go to your boss and say, hey, I need an extra twenty five grand a year. Uh, mm-hmm. I wish it worked that way, right? But sadly, it doesn't. So I said, well, there's got to be other ways to make money. So we started learning, you know, through education and uh, through some mentorship. We learned that, hey, there's other ways of making quick money in real estate other than putting in your own money. So we learned, you know, again, through flips and wholesale. Um, So we were attracted to those because, oh, doesn't take a lot of money. And, uh, and wholesaling really doesn't take a lot of money to get in it. You don't have a whole lot of risk, but you're not going to make big chunks of money either. So wholesaling is not really a business plan unless you're going to do this, you know, at a really high scale. Uh, if you just think you're going to wholesale, you know, one or two houses a year, you're not going to make the profits as you would flipping or definitely as you, you could leverage a rental through, again, leveraging the equity in it to borrow more money or, you know, to making that steady monthly income. So real quick then, I guess, um, you know, just in case, you know, someone doesn't know what wholesaling is, uh, what, what, what would you, what's an easy way for you to explain what wholesaling is? <laughs> Excuse me. So wholesaling is acquiring and selling the property without using your own cash. Um, so you, you know, you go out, you put an offer on the house. Someone accepts your offer. Now, what do you do with this offer? You have to satisfy this offer. You either have to put up your own money and you know close on it, pay all the fees so you can have it. Plus, you're going to have to go find some financing. Most of the, some houses, especially the ones we're looking for, don't qualify for traditional financing. So. What, what do you do with it? I, I don't have the money to put in it, but I have this house. Well, you can sell it out to another investor through by assigning your your offer to another um, to another investor. So you present your offer to another investor and say, "Hey, I have this house. There's you know here's the potential money in it. Would you like to buy it?" So if they like to buy it, they come in, they fulfill that offer. Now, in between there, normally you charge them a fee or, you, in quotes, you know, you sell them for a higher price than you bought it. Uh, there's different ways of doing it. We do it through a channel of, you know, personal buyers that we have. Um, so when I acquire a property, I call my investor buddies and, hey, is this a project that you're willing to do? There's this much money here. I just don't have the money to do the project or you're willing to do it. If yes or no, you can, you got to create a win-win situation where it's still a really good deal for the end buyer, which is going to be the flipper. So pretty much whenever you're, you're getting these wholesale deals set up, you kind of need to run the numbers for that person as well. Uh, just right. Right. I'm buying the house for myself. Again, as I said, wholesaling, it's, it's just an extra strategy for me. Um, I analyze the deal. I put in my best offer. And if, again, if accepted by the seller, then I have this project. Now I know what it takes to rehab this house. Um, I know what it's going to take, you know, to close it. And the, the most important thing is I know what I can sell it for, right? Without knowing the after repair value, as ARV as everyone calls it, then you don't know what your project is worth. Um, so I determine all those numbers internally. You know, and then see if I can do the project myself. If I can't do the project, then I extend it out to one of these um, investors. Gotcha. So this is that uh, this is kind of that no money needed uh, strategy, then, or a little, I guess. Right. right. And uh, so, for instance, you know, you would, you know, just for easy numbers, you would, you would acquire a house that is worth two hundred thousand dollars. But it needs some repairs and 
you know, you, you get the seller to agree, you know, at a hundred thousand dollars. And you know, again, these are you're not going to get these numbers today, but just for everyone to do easy math, um, you get them to, to sell it to you for you know hundred thousand dollars. You know, it's going to take forty to fifty to get it up to the two hundred thousand value. Um, now you have to buy it, hold it. There's some holding fees in there, so that's if you're going to flip it, right? I know what those costs are. If I can meet those costs, I'm going to do the project because at the end. I could make a potentially of forty thousand dollars, but at the end of the day, I'm going to sell this project. So, am I really an investor? No, I'm just a house flipper. And that was uh, gonna, that was going to be the next question: is if if some of these deals you see yourself that you can do, uh, would you go ahead and just keep them yourself? Um, hey, Branko, how's it going? I saw you had your hand raised. I think I said that right. If I didn't, go ahead and correct me. How how you doing? I'm doing well. How are you guys doing? Not We're doing good. well. Good to have you. Thank you, thank you. Um, so I guess, what what is it that you're looking for? Oh, I guess before I, before I keep going, uh, again, if anybody else has anything they want to say, uh, feel free, raise your hand, come on up. Uh, definitely chime in. You know, the, you know, there's definitely knowledge to be learned for everybody. Uh, it's kind of the whole point of this whole thing. Um, definitely people out there are more knowledgeable than us. So um, getting back to this, so what, what is it you look for whenever you're doing this wholesale deal? Um, yeah, how do you, how do you know what what you would want to wholesale? Um, so I wholesale when I can't fulfill the the project, right? If I don't have enough money to put down, get my financing, and or acquire the property and do the rehab to turn around and sell it to make that extra portion, then well, then I don't have a project. I mean, I I have some scribbles on the paper, but I don't have a project. Because I don't have the money to fulfill this project, so what I do is then at that point that I would choose to wholesale it. Before I would say, "Well, I can't do the project, ma'am or sir. You know, I can't fulfill your offer. You know, go find another buyer." Um, so I use this other extra strategy. Now, if I can buy the house or hold it and make turn into a rental, then I would. You know, we look at that too as an extra strategy. But ultimately, our goal is to raise capital or own capital by doing these flips or these wholesales so we can go out and acquire holding properties properties that we can put you know or 20 30 percent down do 30 year terms you know financing where i'm still getting the house at a good price when i'm when i'm renting i'm now i'm creating cash flow every month for the rest of my life so now what i'm doing is i am ultimately replacing my my income with income through real estate so that's my ultimate goal and if i have to wholesale a place and make ten thousand dollars to put in my bank to acquire so i can build up this pot so i can go out and buy these buy and holds that's where my long-term wealth is going to come from is these buy and holds are going to pay me out every month without me having to do any work right yeah no that definitely makes sense uh, that whole passive income strategy so that way you don't need to worry about the whole corporate america uh mindset right. um so are you finding the deals are you are you just driving around town do you are you able to find these you know on the mls uh, you know either through realtor.com or through a realtor uh specifically or how, how are you finding them uh so it's you know i'm, I'm going to be honest here i really don't want to offend anyone who is uh who's an agent but it's hard to find houses with a lot of meat on the bone again if you're going to wholesale a house you got it's got to have quite a bit of meat on on, on the bone it's got to have enough for you to make a little bit for your flipper to make some and then your end buyer still get a fair deal you know you can't just keep bumping up this project to make it worth a million dollars so everybody gets paid that's not reality um so that's kind of how we look at it. Gotcha. So then I guess uh, the next question then, because, uh, you know, I, me and you, we talked uh, before, you know, we met up and we talked, and that definitely sparked uh, fire in me. I got, I started working on a list. I started riding around town. I started looking at uh, different properties, um, and I started calling some of them. Uh, right. And what, is it, what is it you do to convince these people to sell their house to you? Because that's effectively what you're trying to do is tell them, hey, uh, I will take this off your hands. So uh, how, how do you convince someone to sell their house? Right. So, again, we do some 
outbound marketing um, to try to reach folks. We got to go where folks are. Uh, again, we have personal relationships that we build, but not everyone you personally know is in a situation where they might need to sell their home. Um, and not, not every home needs to be sold to an investor. I mean, let's face it, you know, there's homes out there that are beautiful homes that people live in today, then they can just move their stuff out, put it on MLS and get retail price for it. Um, so again, I'm looking for properties that, you know, the seller really needs to sell fast and that I can come in and help them in their situation to, you know, get, get, get them out of this house. Because if this house is, is costing them money, then, or it's costing them to move on to the next phase of their life, and I can come in and help them meet that, and I can create a win-win situation for them and for myself. And you'd be surprised how it's not always money. You know, it, it really goes to developing a relationship with the seller, uh, just like a realtor. You know, you can't just show up to a realtor and say, hey, give me your best deal. It doesn't work that way. You know, let's let's face it. Um, just like, you know, if I approach a seller, I'm, I mean, of course, I want to know what the best price I can get for the house, but I really try to meet that gap and how can I help them, you know, and, um, you know, sometimes they're asking a really high price because they need to live somewhere for three months until the next thing happens. And well, if I can come in and still give you that low price and allow you to stay in the house for three months so you don't have that expense, you know, so again, I try to, I try to see where really their need is because a lot of times these sellers who are trying to sell these homes, you know, fast, their need is not just selling the home. They have a other need. Um, you know, I, I, I've met someone that his need was he needed to move his mom's stuff out and he had nowhere to put it. And we offered to, you know, you know, buy them or, you know, pay for a storage for a year and move the stuff out. Would this help you make this decision? So we really try to see what you know what it, what is it what is it going to take to sell the house, um, and uh, so it, it goes through really having a conversation, developing a relationship, and seeing if you you can meet them where where they are, and um, you know you'd be surprised that not everyone is a fit. You know I've had um, I've had people going into foreclosure. You know they respond to my outbound marketing. And, Oh, you know, I hear that you buy houses. You know, would would you be willing to buy my house? And look, the house, nice house, and could almost buy it for retail. And so I, I, I gave her a really fair offer, and she's like, "Well, you know, I just that's not that's not good enough." I'm like, "Ma'am, you know, after paying you know your house, you're still going to make a significant amount of money." And um, you know, I was like, I, "You know, really, this would save you credit." It's like, well, it's not really about the credit. I'm worried about. I just need to make money. I'm like, you know, we're just not a fit, you know, and, uh, you know, if I can't buy it from the seller, I can't buy it from the seller, and that's okay. And, um, again, I develop relationships through realtors and, you know, and how can I help them get rid of these houses that they cannot sell in the MLS or, or you know, that don't fit traditional lending. So have you, uh, I, I feel like with the market the way it is, have you seen like a slowdown in wholesaling? Because I feel like if I had a property that I was trying to get rid of uh, and you approached me, uh, I might just rather go the retail route considering that uh, homes are kind of selling the way that they are. Have you seen any sort of impacts because of that? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, it's um, it's really become a little bit challenging because there's a lot of people getting into real estate and there's a lot of people getting into this wholesaling and you know, and that's great. I, I have no, nothing against that. I wish more people would get in, and I, we would, could create even a bigger community. But I just think people's mindset that, you know, I'm going to get rich on my first deal, or I need to get rich on my first deal, um, has really slowed down. You know, has gotten some wholesalers away. Uh, so yes, wholesaling has stopped. Of course, there's a huge need in the market today, and you can, I mean, you can get 18 offers in the MLS in any given time, whether it's through investors or whether it's through you know just a regular market. 
so with the, the current market conditions aside, what would you say is the hardest part of doing uh, the wholesale uh, strategy? Getting the deal. <laughs> right. Yep. <laughs> Getting the deal. Uh, you know, and what I've learned is that I had to branch out from, um, you know, just where I, where I got my leads. You know, where I got my leads, you know, I, I just couldn't go out and go knock on a door because I was the one of the five guys in the area buying some houses or, you know, uh, so the competition has become, you know, fierce. But I think if you break through and you differentiate yourself from a, an investor or that sleazy investor, and again, I, I'm not trying to call anyone out, but, you know, uh, if, if you're really into this for the, for the right reasons, you're here to help people meet a need where they can meet your need and you can create win-win situations and really really make a difference versus coming to this market and rob it, which I feel like is what a lot of people's mindset is. Uh, Branko, real quick, um, is this is this something that, that you do as well? Are you in the wholesaling community or what is what is your involvement with real estate or is this more of just a, a knowledge thing for you? Uh, yeah, um, I have a couple companies, uh, one of them, uh, I started off in like the wholesaling real estate space a few years back and uh, graduated to actually buying the deals, syndicating money and things of that nature. So uh, it's a great tool in the toolbox in terms of getting the cash pile for yourself and uh, figuring out how like acquisitions, talking to folks are, um, you know, you know, really working a deal and having a conversation with the seller, right? Um, and then, you know, it gets uh, more and more interesting when, you know, you syndicate money or bring your own money to the pot. But, yeah, no, that's kind of where I started off. And then I branch out in some other in- industries as well. But, um, yeah. So, is that, so since you've kind of moved on with the whole syndication, uh, do you do the, the wholesaling at all anymore? Or is that something that you've kind of just, uh, you still do on the side or as, as they come? Yeah, so I, uh, I have a call center in Eastern Europe, so I have a whole marketing company, and what I do is um, I still go out there and contract out deals, uh, except now I, I try to wholesale as little as possible, uh, because I'll, I, you know if I'm going to get a deal at a discount, especially in the markets that I'm buying in, uh, I'm going to find ways to close on it, so uh, raise you know capital with you know folks that I know in my surrounding and the sphere of influence, right? Uh, or, you know, uh, go out and, you know, actually get a bank, a loan from the bank and, you know, anything you can, right? Um, but, you know, most of the deals are the areas that we're marketing and we're looking to, to purchase it, right? And we're looking to have uh, long-term holds uh, until they get, get bought uh, in like a five to ten year um, cycle, pretty much. It can be extended to another five to ten years depending on uh, what the end buyer chooses to do, but we pretty much... Uh, our, our main bread and butter is land flipping and buying um, some of these properties on creative formats like subject to or owner finance, like carrying the note with the seller. Um, and then we actually lease option out for a five to 10 year lease. And these are kind of like a rent to own type, but it's kind of like a, you pay a certain amount with an option to purchase and you put an option fee down. So it's just a more passive way to have uh, long-term secure renters. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense. Why uh, why take the small assignment fee if you can hold the deal and do it yourself, kind of like what uh, you were saying before, Luis. Yeah, that's uh, kind of what I want to add to that is that, you know, yes, the, the deals with a lot of meat on the bone have gone away, but the other side of the coin has been that you know, capital has been a lot easier to obtain lately since, again, there's a lot more lenders available. Uh, there's a lot more, you know, again, the rates are great, right? So people are out there, um, you know, moving that money. So that's that's the other side of it is that if you, if you have all these different tools in your, in your toolbox, whether it's wholesaling, flipping, you know, as, uh, you know, Branko, mention, you know, whether you do subject to where you can kind of, you know, hold on to this deal until you kind of work it out, uh, you know, where you're not using a lot of financing, you know, see how you can carry it for the current owner until you figure out some financing, you know, again, you might be able to get a, a renter in there and make some really short cash in between, 
uh, you know, triple net leasing. So there's other options that you can do when the deals aren't there. So you, your vehicle doesn't have to stop, right? So your your real estate, if you're using real estate as that vehicle to retirement or to to that financial freedom, you know, to make, to not make a stop is you have to differentiate, you know, as as Branko said, and um, so as I stay in this business, you know, for a long time, I was uh, I was always against being a realtor, uh, and um, so I, I'm starting to see things differently. You know, I, I would benefit great from doing that. I would again, I could meet that gap somewhere else with people, where I could help them in a different way. Where now I just have to, hopefully, one of the realtors I send these offers that I have to. Sometimes it's not a deal; it's just a retail. And hey, you know, you can sell it just as fast in the market than you would with me. Uh, you just happen to call the wrong phone number. I'm going to direct it to a good friend of mine, and he's going to sell the house for you. Um, I mean, if that's how I can help the seller, because there's no meat in the bone for me, now I have to hope that this um, realtor, a friend of mine, whoever it might be, that he's going to take care of the seller, going to maintain this this relationship or my relationship might depend with the seller on on their outcome. So by me being a realtor, I could step in and say, hey, you know, I can't buy your house, but I could sell your house, and I could get you, you know, I can get you what your house is really worth, by being your realtor versus just you know trying to lowball you or you know just for lack of better words you know just give you a wholesale offer versus getting the seller and really helping and that's why I got into this business you know I, I really wish someone would have took a chance on me at one point and um, so you know I've through my own struggles I, I had to learn all this and learn how to raise capital because uh, nobody gave me a chance in the past and um so again, I, I just want to stand in here and, and make a difference in this real estate world because again, it's just a channel for me or to get to retirement and if I can help folks along the way, whether it's helping you make money through this or whether it's to help you make money or help meet your need through real estate buying and selling, then you know that's where I want to stand. That's where I want to be known. That's who I want to be. I'm not just in this because I'm an investor, you know, in quotations, and there's, I'm going to live in a big mansion and drive big cars because at, 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 at an expense of people who are really struggling, so. Yeah, and I think that, that says a lot, um, you know, growing up, uh, my parents, they rented their whole lives, so they recently, in the last five years, I think, they, they purchased their house, um, you know, but those relationships that you build with the landlords, uh, they go beyond just the property, they go beyond just the house. Um, and so, yeah, I absolutely agree. I think uh, having that ability to help somebody out, um, you know, because, you know, life happens. Life happens for a lot of people. Everyone's dealt different hands. Uh, sometimes, like, kind of like you said, someone just needs uh, someone to kind of reach out and give them a break uh, just to get back on their feet. Uh, so I think uh, the, the humanitarian aspect of it is, is huge, uh, absolutely huge. Yeah, and, uh, I mean, we're all in this, you know, of course, to make money and, uh, you know, we're all in this to you know, to move ourselves forward, but I, I definitely would not want to do it at an expense of, you know, of someone that is uh, really, again, I'm not going to put anybody out for a quick buck, that's for sure. Right. Um, so, I had sent you, I sent you over, you know, the, the kind of the questions and everything, and I asked uh, some, some details about a deal that you've done. Uh, I don't know if you have something in mind, but maybe something uh, like what the purchase price was, um, how much money you are able to earn on it, and then... Yep. Uh, some things that went right and some things that went wrong maybe some lessons learned yeah for sure um you know i, I don't i'm not going to talk about my first wholesale deal uh, um, but i will talk about other ones <laughs> take it there's uh, a lot of lessons learned on the first one then you know and for any, for anyone listening you know for i know we'll talk about this later but uh you know, the first one was I got an offer and I just ran around with this piece of paper. Yeah, I got an offer. I got an offer. And I did nothing with it. So, you know, for people who are just thinking about this, it's not that big a deal. But, uh, no, so that was my very first deal. Um, but, again, later as I obtained these offers, uh, you know, so I was able to here locally obtain a house for – Ninety thousand dollars, and how I come to know this again? I, 
met the, I meet the, the seller and they bought this home for their kids and their kids have destroyed it. They stopped paying and, you know, well, they, they need to get rid of this house because now they're paying the mortgage and they're tired of paying the mortgage for their grown children who are destroying the home. And uh, so I go look at the house and the uh, house was a little rough and so I came back and said, like, hey, you know, I, I, I really can't do this. I, uh, you know, there's a lot of work there and I'm just not, I don't feel comfortable coming in and offering you, you know, the 90000 uh, Again, the house is well under market, you know, probably at, it couldn't be sold in a, in, a, in a traditional sale just because of the roof. Uh, there were some things that weren't up to date on it uh, as far as permits because this was a HUD home they bought. But anyways, so I was like, hey, here's where I can meet you. I can give you this, and uh, but you know, you're going to have to give me 30 days or more to satisfy what you're asking. So what I did now, right, so I bought more time to see what I can do you know, and again, I was gonna, I was able to do the deal for eighty thousand. So you're talking ten thousand dollars difference on a home that was worth or valued at about, um, you know, one sixty five in that condition. But you know, ARV after it was redone, you know, actually the flippers ended up selling for uh, two fifteen. So there was money in there to be made in between. But anyways, so I was like, here, let me buy more time. And I was new to this, so I didn't really know what how I was going to satisfy this offer and how I started reaching out to kind of everyone I knew who was buying houses. And um, not everyone wanted to buy this deal. And again, I I didn't know what to do with it, right? So what I did is I, again, through some relationships, met these investors. They came in, analyzed it. They're like, yep, numbers work for us. Because I was trying to sell it to them for 95 Um I got to go back to that, I guess. And I was like, hey, you know, does this work for you? And they're like, yep, the numbers work for us. Let's do it. So they came in. They purchased the deal. Um, you know, I made my assignment fee of $5,000. And they rehabbed the house. Ended up adding a room to it. Got a bunch of money out of it. Because they, they were way more experienced in the flip that he needed that I did. But I um, still didn't let the deal go away. I tried to buy myself more time, find different buyers who would be able to buy this. So I was still able to make $5,000 with no money invested. Um, the seller was satisfied because he got his 90000 My buyer was satisfied because the numbers worked. Um, and so I got two happy people on both sides of me. And, of course, I'm happy in between because I got to make five thousand dollars now today i wouldn't do a wholesale for five thousand dollars um but you know it's money you made without putting any capital of your own into it so of course that's always a good deal nice so i take it then it seems seemed like it was pretty smooth no no real hiccups or or uh, bumps in the road along the way for that one no again i went out found an experience flipper a seasoned um you know real estate investor and you know he had everything lined up so i if anything i made five thousand dollars and i got a bunch of knowledge out of it because now i understand how does this whole machine works so i feel like i've made probably you know what it would cost you to go sit with a guru for a certain amount of money that I made money while doing it. Nice. How's it going, David? You had your hand raised. How are you doing? Yeah, hey. So, um, I'm new to the area, to, like, to Central Valley. I, I've talked to Luis, like, over just, like, a messenger. And, um, yeah, I, so I, I, I haven't flipped a house yet. I, actually, um, I, I work in computer science. Like, I, I work for a tech company. I'm a software engineer. Um, it's just, like, a, it's an ag tech company. But, so I don't know anything about real estate. I'm besides you know, uh, the house I own. But I want to get into kind of like what you guys are doing. But I, I just, you know, like how you said, sometimes you just need like that person to take you under the wing and kind of just show you the way or like the things, the mistakes they made, you know. Um, but I had a question, um, I, guess, I guess for anybody here, how do you know what a home's worth? Like if you're, 
if you're just walking around, you know, and you see, you know, if you're just knocking on doors looking for uh, a potential buyer, um, a potential seller, how do you know off the top of your head just like um, what it like what it's worth? So the way I do it, I've, again, I developed some relationships with some realtors, and uh, so when what what I do is I break my town up kind of in neighborhoods. Uh, just again to answer David's question to be kind of quick about is that my town is broke up in neighborhoods I have the nice neighborhood I have the bad neighborhoods I have the neighborhoods where they're developing their brand new houses and I have you know some established homes so what I do is I call these guys probably every six months and it's like hey you know where are houses selling in you know in these areas so they're telling me what are houses selling in these areas, you know, three twos, two ones, two twos, square footages. So I kind of get comps for these areas and I keep myself updated on what the market is doing right now. Um, you know, some people will tell you, oh, you know, see what it was sold a year ago. In today's market, if you go by what is sold a year ago, I believe you'll end up leaving money on the table because the market is just so hot there's such a demand for it now you know when I bought my home eight years ago in 2013 and anyone's been in real estate for a while I mean house sat there for two weeks while I made up my mind whether I was going to buy it or not um, they were asking 154.9 I, I offered 155 so I offered $100 over asking price and they paid closing costs um, you're not going to get that today. So uh, you got to stay updated. Keep keep your contacts. Um, Realtor.com, Zillow, those are okay tools, but those are not accurate. They're not being kept up to date to the way that, you know, a realtor has access to the MLS. Um, again, why I need to go back to what I said earlier, why I feel the need that I need to be there for my benefit and for the benefit of others. And, and how do you um, say say next year I have like I don't know like I don't know thirty to fifty thousand dollars and I want to get into my next I want to get into like my first investment property. Um, do do lenders require like a certain percentage for like an investment property? Like do they require since I'm not going to live in it, is it a thing where like they say like, oh, you have to put twenty down, like twenty percent down, or like, what's the process like? Yeah, that's what I've ran into. Uh, now there is different lending out there, right? You know, you can go to a bank and say this is investment property. They might ask you to put more than twenty percent down. They're going to make sure you have enough, you know, to cover the cost and all that. Um, we've kind of looked for other ways where we can finance the place where you know I'm not walking into a Wells Fargo or a Bank of America to look for a loan I'm going out and looking for a lending company that they do asset based lending right so now I'm bringing them a house under value what there's a there's an asset there they there, there's money to be made so you know if I can show that I have the rehab money I have everything to complete the project they usually come in and uh, that goes upon the lender. It goes upon the relationship you've developed with them. Um, you know, some guys do, you have to do 30%. They only do, you know, 70% of the project. Other guys will do 80% of the project. Some will do, you know, 70% of the purchase price and full percent, you know, 100% of the rehab. So financing, I mean, really has gotten, you know, pick and choose what fits you and what fits your need. Uh, again, when I, eight years ago, I did not know about all of this. So I didn't know there was many options other than all I have to have 20% down. Do, when, when you're, when you're looking at a house um, and you're kind of like going through the numbers in your head, are you, do you have somebody there with you where you're saying like, hey, like how much, how much is it going to cost for me to, make all the fixes or you know things that I upgrades that I need to make or do you just do those things by yourself out of like um, just you just been doing it for so long well, I don't 
I don't know if I've been doing it for so long. Uh, I, I mean, I definitely have experience in it. Um, I mean, I, I have done handyman work uh, for a number of years. So, yes, I've always done my own work. So I, I do know what it takes to get it done. Um, so our first home was one of those that needed, you know, needed upgrades. And um, so I, I outsourced what I didn't know. I did what I did know. And I was able to start dipping into rehabbing in the first home that I lived in. Um, so, yes, I have a little bit of experience just because I get to touch it. You know, I get, I get, I get to do it on a regular basis. Um you know, there are a lot of tools out there now that, you know, there, you know, whether it's a deal analyzer, um, there are a lot of, uh, you know, just a lot more tools that you can get costs of things uh, or, or of the repairs. But lately, if you've noticed, uh, I mean, even, even if you're not in the business, you know, through all the memes and social media, um, you know, lumber prices have skyrocketed. So... What costed you, you know, thirty thousand dollars to rehab a year ago? Today is easily going to cost you, you know, forty thousand to do that same project. So the same thing, you kind of have to be up to date on what's going on. Um, you know, consider those things. Um, give you some percentage of gaps where you allows you to do the project. So when we started doing this, we wouldn't buy a home unless it was seventy percent under ARV with you know and then minus all the repair costs and so we would get that offer really down give us a big cushion where we were able to make mistakes um you know in today's market um there's just no i mean if you're going to flip a home there's no room to make a mistake just because of the way materials are uh labor scarce um so there's uh the market is it is changing and you just have to be paying attention to that, right? So real quick, uh, kind of along with what David was asking, I know there's uh, those the construction loans that are out there. I think that the, the 203K or whatever they're called. Uh, have you ever used any of those construction loans? Basically where the your lender will kind of finance your rehab for you. You know, obviously you put money down. Uh, have you used any of those, Luis? So I have not used any of those. Um, again, I, after we get these chunks of money, we try to purchase these places. And uh, so we don't have a whole lot of capital. We always invest for capital. I haven't, we're moving into the direction where we can start being our own bank. But um, I have not used any of those. What we've done is we've moved to different type of lending where if I only have enough to do the, you know, the rehab and carry costs, and if I can acquire the project and just carry for them for the time that I'm rehabbing, then I can sell it, satisfy their offer once I sell it. Kind of doing like a subject to. So I, I move to those types of financing if I'm going to rehab it, where it takes a lot less capital. And then there's at the end of the day, there's a lot less interest that I'm paying to somebody else. Uh, it, I just, the profits just aren't there anymore to be loose with it gotcha and that kind of segues into the next session because i know i know that you did or you do uh you know the flips the flips as well um so when you're trying to when you're finding the deals for the flips are you using that same criteria that you did for wholesaling them uh now you're just at a position where you can finish the deal yourself yeah so of course i'm always trying to buy it for the lowest offer possible you know um, i mean that's 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 the name of the game um, and then yes, if I can flip it, then I'll flip it. If not, then yes. Um, but you know, we've, uh, so what we're doing now is because we've kind of stopped doing it and there hasn't been a whole lot of, we, we just haven't done a whole lot of deals, you know? And, um, I, I'm going to say the, the word that I've been, you know, hate using, but you know, through the COVID thing, we kind of just slow down like all right let's analyze our business and how do we do business and now how do we reach people without having that personal contact so we've kind of slowed down and during that time we've analyzed the investments we had and uh, so currently we're 
we're selling one of our single family rentals and then we're going to switch those funds into multifamily which kind of we talked or you know you had uh, someone here talking about it last week you know doing uh, out of state and that's that's where we're going next um so because i'm again because my vehicle stopped moving through wholesaling and flipping i found other ways of where i can still make revenue and move forward within my own inventory you know within my own portfolio okay so if i can't grow it this way how can i grow it this way right so now it's time to sell those rentals that you acquired a few years ago for you know a lot cheaper get that equity out move it into something else that's going to multiply so that's where i learned where i need to be in the rentals is you know what works for us is going to be doing ultimately getting rid of the single families to buy multi-families so i guess that your your plan moving forward kind of answered my next question is uh but have you kept the flips that you've done or do you flip them and sell them and get the cash um what is your yes. answer? what would be done there yeah so we've just kind of been raising capital as we've been going along um just to kind of again you know we've invested into our own business so what i've what we realized through doing this you know in the last eight years is that we need to structure this like a business because we are planning and being this long term i mean real estate you know for us is something that we see ourselves doing after retirement uh, it's something we see ourselves doing really long term uh just again we've really gotten a passion for it so um we don't we figured you know it's going to be better if we built a business where we can earn money under that business and again really set up our kid a whole lot differently than we were set up you know and um we're just giving her extra layers of protection if you know how she can earn money and protect herself you know earn money save taxes down the road um so what we're again working on is building this machine that we can that just makes money and I can hand it off to my kid one day and now she doesn't she'll never have to have a nine to five. She can just keep driving this portfolio that we've built and uh, you know, she can make a living that way. Have you ever looked at keeping your flips? Because I know that's you know it's another different strategy. That's one thing that I, I do like about real estate is there's multiple different avenues based on uh, where, where you are in life but I know one of the strategies that a lot of people use is kind of like what you were talking about buying these deals uh, from other lending sources whether it be private money hard money or what what have you uh, doing the remodel and then uh, pulling a loan out and, and uh, on the property and getting your, your equity that way uh, and you also get to keep the property throw a renter in there and have the cash flow is that that not something you guys have wanted to do or is there a reason for that or is that no. something you guys um, again that's that's how we earn the money to, um, how would I say this? So it makes sense. Um, of course we want to hold our flips if it makes sense, if we can afford it. Um, again, I didn't know how to manage rentals. I've had one rental for four years now and I've done nothing but pull my hair with it cause I just did not know how to manage rentals. Um, so, but yes, what I've learned in the last four years, of course, you need to hold on to these rentals, pull your money out, get the monthly cash flow out of it because you get to benefit from these rentals more than just monthly cash flow, right? So you get to write off some interest, you get to write off some expenses. So there, there's other benefits by holding on to these rentals that you don't have with the flips. Gotcha. So uh, just like with the wholesaling, uh, do you have like, an example, I guess, of one of the properties that you have flipped. Um, what'd you buy it for? Uh, how much went into it? I know kind of David asked, you know, how you, how you kind of eyeball uh, that rehab cost. Uh, so, you know, what kind of went into that? What, what went wrong with it? Because I feel like flipping, there's probably a lot more room for it to go wrong. Yeah, and again, the, the only flip I, I'm going to, I guess, fully complete is going to be this this one that was a rental now I'm fully flipping it to sell it that's why I'm going to make my big chunk um, 
everything I've done it hasn't been that full I guess your traditional flip like like you like like you see it um, so a lot of times we just clean them up wholesale them. Um, you know we'll fix up small stuff and we're able to uh, what you call hotel where you can clean it up enough where it's livable and now you can have a realtor sell it out for regular money that's a different way of we've done flip gotcha yeah that's kind of how uh kind of how i've done uh the, the two homes that i've sold um i bought them i bought the first one uh, really not with the intention of making any money through real estate so that one is, was kind of an accidental flip um but was able to make some money on that and then uh the second one was bought for investment purposes and um you know had, had enough selling it for extenuating circumstances but still was able to make make money on the deal um you know, again, like you said, kind of not your traditional traditional flips, but I, I, I do agree. I I, uh, I think my mentality with it or the way I look at it is, you know, kind of doing little mini flips, uh, even if it's for another investor to come in and, and finish off the big things. Uh, if it's something as simple as painting, flooring, um, and get out of it, uh, I, I've noticed that that alone is enough to make uh, a decent chunk of money. Yeah, and again, you know, not every house... Um Again, not every neighborhood is worth doing the huge flip and doing brand new because in that neighborhood, you're really only going to get, you know, that that max top dollar because, again, no one, certain people are not going to want to live there. So you, you got to rehab it according to the neighborhood that you're in. And sometimes you really don't, again, especially in Tulare, you don't need to do much to get a livable, clean home out to someone. Yeah, for sure. Um, so I guess kind of moving along. Uh, so advice, advice for someone new. I know David kind of said that he's, you know, he's looking to start out. Uh, Branko, I know you've done. Sounds like you've done quite a bit. Um, you know, someone, someone has, you know, let's just say, you know, ten or twenty thousand dollars they've been able to save up or earn somehow. Uh, uh, Branko, what would what would you say to that person? How how could they get started? Um, you know, investing and in whatever avenue. What would you recommend? Well, I mean, it just really depends on uh, what your investment strategy is, right? Um, man, if I was starting off and I had twenty grand, I'd put it all in marketing. And get as many homeowners that are in motivation to sell and figure out a way to work them. I mean, it's just there's multiple ways to skin that lead. Refer them out to realtors with someone that's on your team that's a licensed realtor, or do wholesale deals, or take that twenty thousand and find a amazing owner finance or sub two deal and raise the money i mean if you if you have a deal you can always find the money just get the deal the whole point is you know in this competitive market and where you know so many people are marketing so many people are getting in the space you, know, you got to have a cutting edge when it comes to the marketing you got to know what the hell you're doing and you got to know what market you're, you're you're trying to acquire in right or trying to do transactions in. and uh, if you can get that down with 20 grand i mean you can you can you, know, you can ten x that no problem. What about you, Luis? What would you what would you what would you tell somebody who's trying to get started? Yeah, I mean, I would agree with that. That's definitely you know, again, if you're making if you're going to get into real estate as a business as a long term thing, you know, definitely you know you need to how how do I reach most people? How do I get this you know this whole thing started? But uh, you know, even just for the the regular investor, the regular person that wants to, again, just find new ways to earn more money. You know, this is, you know, real, real estate is an option. And if I can give any advice to anyone and, you know, it was what I went through and to get into it, it's, it's almost like when you're a little kid and you're, you know, you're jumping into the deep end for the first time and you're, you're just scared of doing it because you don't know what you're going to do with it. You know, um, don't, you know, what happens when you jumped in that deep end, right? You, you jumped, you figured out you, you didn't die. You know, you, you, you swam to the edge and, and you got better at it. And, uh, you know, next thing you knew, you were able to jump and do flips. And, uh, you know, again, I'm not jumping and doing flips, but I, I definitely feel like I'm not scared of jumping into the deep end anymore. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not afraid of have you know, going out there and touching customers or, uh, you know, touching these sellers, you know, you got to find them where they are first. And uh, so we found a, new, a few channels where we reach those folks. And, 
I mean, these are just people, you know, go out, have a conversation, tell them what you're doing and not everyone's going to be a fit, and, but that's okay. You know, just keep moving along with it. You'll meet great people along the way. Uh, and, uh, you know, do, do something, do something while you're out there and help someone. Uh, just, I don't think you have any regrets. I have not. This has become a, uh, almost a, an, an addiction to me now that how do I scale up, right? How do I get to where Branko's talking about, right? Because I'm not there. Um, you know, I haven't put this machine to work where I can, you know, 10x it, as, as he described it. But, uh, you know, we're, we're definitely making funds with this. Uh, we're, we're making money. We're having fun. We're learning. And I think the learning is... Uh, is great. I mean, there's nothing wrong with having an extra tool in your pocket as a as a professional to and in another new line where you can earn an income. So, you can never go wrong with getting into real estate. Uh, kind of kind of going along with what you said. I know uh, you know in this line of work, networking is huge. Um, you know, meeting new people, um, finding out what it is that they do. Um, and I know you know one thing is uh, one one tip. Uh, is you know if you're gonna go try to hook up with somebody or, or network with somebody or ask them for help, um, you know not don't just go up to that person and be like, hey, uh, I need your help. Can you help me? Um, you know, trying to offer offer something to them. You know, hey, I, this is what I'm trying to do. Um, you know, can I help you do something similar? Are you doing anything similar? Uh, kind of trading your time for knowledge. Uh, have you had any any sort of experience with that where you kind of went up to somebody and was like, hey? Um, I really want to know how to do this. I see that you're doing it. Uh, can I help you do your deal or can I help you with your project? Absolutely. You know, again, I, I had to learn that the hard way, you know, um, you know, again, not everyone's going to be willing to extend out help to you unless you're willing to meet them halfway. And, uh, again, if you're going to be in this business, add to this business, bring value to the people you are coming in contact with, whether it's a realtor, whether it's a homeowner, whether it's an, a, another investor, bring them value. If you bring people value, then people are willing to, to work with you or at least willing to hear you because now you're bringing them something versus taking something away. You know, um, again, people are always willing to, to be working with you if you're bringing something to the table as well versus taking away from you. Um, again, if I can add value to anyone, and a lot of times, even if I don't get anything out of it, it's not a big deal. You know, it's, I've gotten things in my life out of things that I didn't pay anything for. So pay it forward, you know, that always bring value to whoever you're around. For sure. For sure. Um, I know you kind of said that you're doing your first flip right now, or you're about to finish up with that one. And I, I know you've done some wholesaling, uh, what is the what does the real estate portfolio look like for you right now? Uh, what is it that you're working on or currently have going? Um, so again, we're trying to move into multifamilies. Where um, again, through this, we learned that we will be capped out on having these rentals uh, under our own name, and um, so we'll be capped out on the amount of mortgages we can do. Uh, you know, and again, I got my primary residence rental. So if I start adding on, then at some point I'm going to be capped out where I can't grow anymore. So now there's, you know, you either do it this under a business or I'm looking to where I can invest into multifamilies where now I have one mortgage before rents or one mortgage, three rents, one mortgage, two rents. It is a lot better than one mortgage, one rent. Because now when this place is empty and you have no renters, I'm out money. Again, these are things that I've learned through doing it. And now we're just kind of re-gearing and, okay, so how do we do this better, right? We're always adjusting and how do we do it better? How do we make this pay us more in the long term? So we figured let's, this is what works for us. We need to invest in the multifamilies. Um, so the money we're going to take from this old rental flip, we're going to put into a uh, fourplex, and um, so that way we can have more, a little bit better return, 
something that you can cash flow me way better, way more than the single family was able to. Gotcha. Cool, man. Um, yeah, now that was pretty much it. Uh, me and David, you know, we, we started talking about, you know, wanting to kind of put put this together, uh, you know, just from the, the knowledge aspect. Um, I've done quite a bit of research on my own, uh, done a few, few small things on my own as far as real estate and investing goes. Um, you know, but this is, it's been a lot of fun being able to talk to people, uh, especially having people join up, uh, people that are just starting, people that are well off into this business, um, kind of going along with the whole networking thing, uh, getting to uh, get knowledge from other people that have been doing it. Um, you know, this is, this has been a lot of fun, uh, being able to kind of talk to people, learn from people. Uh, so the last question I really have for you is kind of just a random one is, uh, a favorite place you visited just to kind of change it up a little bit. I don't, I don't travel much, um, but one of my favorite places I've visited, um, you know, and this might be weird to some folks, but it was um, Wisconsin, springtime, it's a nice place, um, really enjoy it, really laid back uh, area, um, nice country, rolling hills, really different from kind of our background here where it's flat and dusty. Uh, smogged out all summer long. Um, I, I really enjoyed that that area of the, of the country, that Midwest area of the country. Uh, you had to travel Wisconsin, Minnesota, South Dakota. Um, I really enjoyed the area. Uh, so that's one place I visited. I really enjoy it. And actually, I lied. There was one more question that I really did want to ask you uh, <laughs> because I know me and you had talked offline. Um, you know, a few months ago, uh, but your your like your future plans, that whole five year goal, that five year plan. I know you were talking about moving moving some assets out of state, starting to just invest out of state. You're, you've already been talking about the whole multifamily route. Um, you know, I know you're saying this is your your uh, beyond retirement plan. Uh, so, what does that short term future look like for you? So again, you know, in, in the last year, um, we were able to uh, raise a little bit of capital. We were able to um, work with some lenders, put ourselves in a position where we had some access to funds. Um, again, there is there's going to be a learning curve with this, and uh, I knew there was going to be, and I'm, I'm right in it, guys. And you know, if, again, I've grown so much as a as a person, as a professional, um, just you know by by doing real estate, and um, you know we're. We're ready to scale up. You know, we we really are. Um, we're gearing that way where we can really be doing more deals. Um, my, if I have a, a goal for the next five years, is to change uh, some realtors' minds that uh, you can have better clients with investors than you can with retailers. Gotcha, man. That's awesome. Um, hey. Um, if, if uh, can I jump in real quick? Um, yeah, I have yeah. a question before you end. Um, so, um, you know, I, I've been thinking about doing this, and I, I've been talking to like family and friends about it. And then, uh, because over here, well, I'm originally from Monterey County, and over there, the like the house I own now um, over there is probably like a million dollar house. Right here, it's only three hundred. So, so I you know when the, when my friends over there see it, they're like, hey, like know like you want to flip let me know and then you know like well, let's do this but how do you how what do you recommend like if because i i live here so i know i can be here all the time i work remotely so i can just even work for my flip um just take my laptop but how do you how do you how do you decide like what's what they're worth you know at the end of the deal like i put in the most work Maybe we put in the same amount of money, but I put in the most work. Like what? Like is, what do you guys do about that? Like, is there have you guys done that before? Is that is that a, uh, or do you guys kind of just like try to stay away from that? Raising capital. Yeah, I mean, it, if you can, if the numbers work, the numbers work. If you can raise the capital to do the deal, to finish the deal, to to make your 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 slice of the pie then the numbers work you have to trust it you have to trust that what you did is the right thing to do is there a risk yes you know and this is why i was kind of 
you know, when, when I give advice to people is don't be scared to jump in, in, the, in, the, in the deep end. You know, have a few extra strategies in your back pocket. You know, if you see that you're getting in over your head, can I still wholesale this thing out for more money because, you know, of how I do it? Don't be scared. You, you got to trust that what you did is right. Um, the market is changing, but don't be afraid of those changes. It doesn't change, you know, $50,000 from one day to, to the next. So don't be scared. Well, I think, uh, I think if I understood the question uh, that David asked, it's kind of more along the lines of like partnering up with somebody. Um, if someone does more work, someone brings in more money, uh, how do you slice that? Is that kind of what you were asking, David? Is that? Yeah, it's like, a, yeah, if I started, if, I, if Brandon and I just decided, like, hey, like, we're going to work on our first flip, and then I said, I'm going to put in 30, you're going to put in 30 grand, and we're just going to work on this thing. But because Brandon works out of town in Monterey or lives out of town in Monterey, but I live here in Tulare. Um, and I do most of the work. How do you, how do you decide, like, how do you decide who, who gets what? Like, Hey, like, you know, I know we said we we're going to split it, but you didn't, you didn't work, you know, you just provided money, but I provided money. Do you guys just rec- do you just recommend like, Hey, don't do business with families or friends? Um, or is there like a method to this that you, that you would recommend? Uh, do you want me to answer this question, or Luis? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go for it. Yeah, go ahead, Branko. Uh, yeah. I mean, listen, it's about who you're talking to, right? And what type of preferred rate of returns they're used to. I'm not going to overpay for money if they're used to three to four percent or two percent because they've got it in the savings account. If they got fifty grand in the savings account and they're not getting more than two to three percent, then why am I going to give them ten, fifteen, twenty, right? Um. So, and it just really just depends on the person you're having a conversation with, right? Um, I'll be frank with you. The way that I structure my deals is I put 0% of my money in. They put in the total amount of money, and they pay me a $10,000 acquisition fee. So, it just depends on what level of service you're providing that investor or that money, right? If they don't have to lift a finger, you're doing all the work. You are you know what you're placing your capital into. You're getting a rate of return that you know, this is double what they're used to. Um, that that's what you give them, right? You, you don't you don't have to give someone you know half the pie or ten percent of the pie or you don't have to give anyone equ- any equity share. You could just run it as you're giving me a loan and it's backed by real estate. Does that make sense? Yeah, I, I didn't even I never even thought about it like that. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, kind of using using them as your bank. That kind of goes back to the whole private money. Uh, if, you're, if your friend or your contact isn't around here, uh, turn them into your bank. Uh, have them have them fund the deal for you. Literally, all I tell people is a very simple thing. Come, uh, come over to my house and play a game with me. And we play Monopoly. And after we play Monopoly, I explain how it works in real life. And that's usually how I get my money. I'm not even good joking. That is an interesting strategy, considering I've heard Monopoly can ruin families and ruin households. I kind of like that idea. Then if they get mad, you know it's not a good a good fit. Awesome. Yeah, I will say, uh, you know, obviously, yeah, you know, you're looking out for your your, your best interests and your, your your money as well. Um, you know, but depending on who it is and depending how it goes, you know, I I, I feel like getting some of a deal. Uh, if, if you need them to make the deal happen. Um, you know, it's better than no deal at all, you know, especially if you're starting out. Um, you know, you can chalk it up to knowledge, chalk it up to experience. Um, but yeah, definitely find different strategies and, and, and communicate that with them uh, ahead of time. That's what I'd probably do is make sure that, that everybody's clear ahead of time what, what's going to happen before you get too far in it. Yeah, absolutely. You know, know your terms going in. Again, you know, even if you're just JVing in with someone because, you know, you're putting in the money and they're going to do the rehab type of thing just make sure everyone knows what the terms are what the risks are um again i'm going to go back to what i said at the very beginning create a win-win situation for the both of you because who knows maybe you know working with someone could potentially help you do more deals but um yeah don't don't get feelings attached to it uh you know this is strictly you know this is strictly work and uh, if everyone knows the terms everyone agrees 
agrees to it, there shouldn't be a reason why that there's things down the road. All right, so I guess I'll ask any more questions, any more inputs. Uh, Branko, I appreciate the, the knowledge, man. That's, that's been awesome. Uh, anybody got any more questions? I have one, one more. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so, um, like I mentioned earlier, like I bought, uh, well, what I owe on my house is 300 what If, like, in the next two years I can pay off 100 we would you think, do you think that's a good idea? Why? Like, Why? Why are you paying up? What's your interest rate right now? Uh, 2.5. Why would you pay that off? It's free money. Don't pay that house off. I was thinking you have, you if have I bring money. it down to 200 refinance and rent it, would you guys no. recommend that? No, take that money and and invest it. Why, why, why are you paying down free money? Go take yes. that money and buy another house. Yeah, you're never going to find interest rates like that, so that's for sure. Uh, what I would do is if you got equity in your in your property, right? This is my favorite strategy, and I, I love this stuff. So I'll, I'll give you guys a two minute high level talk, right? I love to pull out HELOCs on my properties, and I take that HELOC, and you know, usually I get some great rates, and on those great rates, I put them in a term life insurance policy and get a for sure eight percent, and then I tap that uh, term life insurance policy at ninety at ninety percent of the LTV. Then I go out and buy real estate. So I'm automatically making a 5 to 6% before I've even placing it in anything. Then I place it into real estate. Then whatever my real estate gives me, let's say it's at least a minimum of 20% of what I'm looking for, I'm getting at least 25% right off the bat. Sweet. Yeah, that's definitely uh, something that I guess I never thought of, never heard of, uh, kind of investing the money before yeah. you invest in real estate. That's, that's interesting. Infinite banking. Just uh, go look at Bully. Bank-owned uh, life insurance. The same thing, uh -huh. but we have a thing for us. It's called term life insurance and infinite banking. It's an amazing strategy. Interesting. That's awesome. Yeah, man, that's cool. Uh, I think it's. I think it kind of highlights the whole point of this thing is to kind of share that knowledge. Uh, definitely right. did not know about that. Yeah, no, there's, uh, again, that's what I've learned, again, in the last few years of doing this, there's uh, there's 101 ways of doing this, and you just have to find what works for you, what are you comfortable doing, and, you know, when, don't limit yourself, don't limit yourself to, oh, I'm, I'm a wholesaler, you know, I'm, I'm a flipper, uh, or I, I do buy and holds, you know, diversify yourself, uh, again, you know, I've uh, I have a buddy, my personal, my private lender. He also does lending out to other folks in in a different stage where he does like hard money lending, where it's you know goes through an institution that he has. And uh, again, there's a whole different um, different ways of doing this. And uh, again, I think Branko just brought up one of the great ways of doing it. That's for sure. Cool. I I, uh, I I know I definitely appreciate all the uh, all the inputs, the questions. Um, that's kind of the whole point of this is to, to share share that knowledge, share that information. Uh, so if there is nothing else, I think we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. Uh, we're trying to do this pretty regularly. Um, the other David, the one up here, the moderator, uh, he's also doing uh, doing talks uh, throughout the week. Um, I know that he's he's been talking with uh, a lender, a loan officer. Um, and there's definitely been some pretty solid information there. So I mean, that could be another route, David, if you're interested. Um, you know, in the whole investing side, I know you asked earlier about uh, putting money down for an investment property. What does a lender ask? Um, he's he's been doing this same type of thing with a loan officer who can definitely kind of show you down uh, down that path to get where you're trying to go as well. Um, and you know, maybe using a using a bank isn't the route you want to go, and you go down the private money route. But at least the information is out there. Um, and I think that's kind of the whole the whole premise is the information is there. Uh, this is just another avenue to find it. So if there's nothing else, um, I think we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. Uh, Luis, I appreciate it, man. That was a lot of fun. Um, no, thank you guys I'm for glad, having me. Yeah, I'm glad you're able to come on here and, uh, and talk and share what you've done. I know I, I was able to talk to you um, and kind of hear, hear what you've been up to, uh, which, like I said before, kind of inspired me to get moving on some stuff on my end. Um, so I figured I'd definitely do the same for someone else. So I appreciate it. 
Yeah, and uh, again, I, I think this uh, new clubhouse platform, I, I think this is a great thing. Um, you know, this I've been on it for two weeks, and I've, I think I've spent more time on here than any other social media, uh, where you can really create a community of knowledge and really get to uh, build with other people and take yourself to the next level as, you know, as, as we all grow together. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, David, actually, uh, the one up here, uh, got me onto this and started I started poking around on here and realizing uh, what all this had to offer so I uh, definitely agree so with that being said I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up I'm going to come out of my wine cellar and go enjoy the rest of my vacation hope everybody has a good weekend themselves yep same here all right, see ya alright guys thanks yep <laughs>